And Dural Industries has once again drawn attention within the defense sector by demonstrating that disruptive approaches to weapons development are not limited to traditional industry giants. The company's announcement of a successful surface launch test of its Barracuda 500 missile marks more than just another test event, it represents a deliberate shift toward rethinking how the United States and its allies can generate long-range precision firepower at scale. At a time when defense planners consistently highlight the problem of limited inventories and supply chain fragility, Endural is positioning itself as a company prepared to offer a solution that prioritizes affordability, modularity, and mass production without sacrificing capability. The Barracuda 500 test involved launching the missile from the ground with the help of a solid rocket booster attached to the tail section. For Enduro, the achievement was not only a matter of proving that the missile could successfully transition from a surface platform into powered flight but also of validating the broader design philosophy that underpins the entire Barracuda family. The company has emphasized that each version of Barracuda, whether pallet-launched, air-launched, or surface-launched, shares over 90% of its components. That level of commonality is unusual in missile development, where unique designs tailored to specific launch methods often dominate. By aligning multiple versions under one production architecture, Endural aims to reduce cost and complexity, making it possible to manufacture large numbers of missiles quickly with existing facilities and personnel. The defense market has long wrestled with a fundamental tension between quality and quantity. Modern precision strike systems are typically highly advanced but come with staggering price tags, complex logistics, and slow production cycles. That means even well-funded militaries like the United States struggle to build stockpiles sufficient to deter or fight peer adversaries in a prolonged conflict. And Dural's leadership has not shied away from bluntly pointing this out, arguing that exquisite but limited systems are inadequate for the strategic environment of today. By contrast, they are presenting Barracuda as a weapon that balances precision with scale, with affordability serving as a strategic advantage. The message is clear, wars are not won with a handful of expensive systems but with an industrial base capable of producing large volumes of effective weapons quickly. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Barracuda 500 is its compatibility with a wide array of launch platforms already fielded by U.S. and Allied forces. The company has stated that the missile can integrate with systems such as HIMARS, Harpoon, and Patriot launchers, as well as be deployed from stacked shipping containers. This flexibility is significant because it allows militaries to field the weapon without massive doctrinal or logistical changes. For soldiers and operators, that means learning curves are minimized, and for planners, it translates into faster adoption and wider deployment. In an era when interoperability and joint operations are emphasized across NATO and other alliances, the ability of a new missile to fit seamlessly into existing architectures could accelerate its acceptance. Beyond compatibility, the modular design also carries implications for supply chain resilience. By ensuring that boosters and other components can be sourced from both U.S. and allied industrial bases, Endural is directly addressing one of the biggest bottlenecks in modern arms production, reliance on specialized, single-source suppliers. In recent conflicts, from Ukraine to the Middle East, demand for munitions has consistently outpaced supply. By deliberately building flexibility into its sourcing model, Endural hopes to sidestep the choke points that often delay mass production. This approach also strengthens strategic cooperation by making it easier for allied nations to contribute to joint manufacturing efforts without being locked out by restrictive supply chains. It is worth noting that the Barracuda family has already seen testing in other configurations, such as pallet launches for the U.S. Air Force and lug launches for the U.S. Army's maneuverable missile projects. These earlier efforts provided the groundwork for the surface-launched variant and demonstrated Endural's ability to adapt the system across mission profiles. The surface-launch capability, however, 
adds a layer of versatility particularly relevant to land forces, who need cost-effective options for countering adversaries with large inventories of standoff weapons. By broadening the operational envelope of the Barracuda, Enduro is signaling that it does not see the missile as a niche capability but as a scalable family of systems capable of contributing across multiple domains. From an industrial perspective, Enduro's promise to produce high single-digit thousands of Barracuda 500 missiles annually is bold. Few Western missile programs can claim such a potential output, especially within short timelines. If realized, this scale of production could fundamentally alter procurement discussions by reframing expectations about how many precision strike weapons a nation can realistically stockpile. The idea of shifting from boutique systems to industrial-era production volumes mirrors broader debates about preparing for great power conflict, where sustained usage rates could quickly deplete existing arsenals. Enduro's pitch is essentially that the United States and its allies cannot afford to wait years for replenishment when combat consumes thousands of munitions in weeks. Still, important questions remain about the missile's performance, cost per unit, and survivability against advanced air defenses. Enduro has provided limited public details about the Barracuda 500's range, payload, or guidance systems, likely due to security considerations. Yet, for procurement officials, these specifications will be central to determining whether the system truly meets operational needs. Affordability and mass production are compelling selling points, but they cannot fully substitute for effectiveness in the field. Critics will want to know how the missile stacks up against comparable systems in terms of precision, resistance to jamming, and destructive capability. Another consideration is the competitive landscape. Traditional defense primes are unlikely to cede market space without response. Companies with entrenched positions in cruise missiles and long-range strike weapons may highlight their systems' proven combat records and advanced features to argue against what they might frame as an unproven alternative. Whether Enduro can persuade defense officials to allocate procurement dollars toward a newer entrant remains to be seen. The company's willingness to invest its own resources into development, however, is a sign of confidence. By taking on financial risk before securing government contracts, Enduro is attempting to demonstrate commitment and accelerate progress in a way that contrasts with more traditional acquisition models. The geopolitical context further strengthens the logic behind Barracuda's development. With tensions rising in the Indo-Pacific and Europe, the U.S. and its allies are preparing for scenarios where adversaries may deploy large numbers of missiles and drones designed to overwhelm defenses. Countering those threats requires not just advanced interceptors but also offensive options that can be fielded in sufficient volume to hold enemy assets at risk. If the Barracuda 500 can be produced in the numbers and dural projects, it could offer commanders a tool to impose costs on adversaries by demonstrating that Western forces can match mass with mass, rather than relying exclusively on a smaller inventory of exquisite systems. Ultimately, the successful surface launch test of the Barracuda 500 should be seen less as an isolated milestone and more as a signal of intent. Enduro is staking its reputation on being able to deliver weapons that break the mold of slow, expensive, and limited production runs. Whether military services embrace that vision will depend on upcoming demonstrations, cost analysis, and the ability of the system to meet rigorous testing standards. Yet, the broader conversation the company is provoking, about how to make long-range strike weapons both effective and plentiful, is likely to resonate far beyond this single program. As defense budgets tighten and threats proliferate, the demand for scalable solutions will only grow stronger, and Enduro is positioning itself to answer that demand with a product designed from the outset for scale. At this stage, the Barracuda 500 is still in development, with more testing and refinement ahead. But the principles guiding its design, commonality, modularity, supply chain flexibility, and mass production, 
point toward a future where affordability and scale are no longer secondary considerations but core requirements. If Enduro can deliver on its promises, the Barracuda 500 may not only add a new missile to Allied arsenals but also challenge long-standing assumptions about how the defense industry builds and fields weapons. In that sense, the recent test represents both a technical achievement and a broader statement, the era of boutique missile production may be giving way to one where quantity, built on smart design, becomes its own form of quality.